So right after my confession video about Silver Surfer, many people have been asking for a proper guide review and kind of rotation explanation video. So uh, I am making just that. We have Silver Surfer rank 5 SIG 200. I'm not using my rank 3 on purpose because this is a bit more realistic, not using any synergies or boosts or anything of the sort. So typically you won't start the fight with basically a parry and a heavy charge and to activate that power gain. That is how I start my standard rotation, which is kind of one of the easier things to do. And immediately after that, build up to level one and drop that level one when Power Cosmic has returned on the Fury page. So you trigger the single power gain with the heavy attack level one for the Furies. And basically from that point, you're more or less set. Once Power Cosmic does return, you do want to trigger the third buff, which is armor up, which in most fights isn't too essential, but still having more buffs is super helpful. And you do that with a heavy attack as well, as if not to waste power, unless you do know that you're gonna be taking a lot of block damage. And in that case, you do want to trigger that armor up buff with a level one, because then you would gain two armor up buffs and you'd have significantly bulkier Silver Surfer. Once you have all of the three buffs active the main way to play around with silver surfers to keep an eye on power gain buff that is the one that matters that is the one that you want to use and you want to always let that power gain expire and as soon as it does you should have your power cosmic back in line and you want to reactivate power cosmic on power gain buff because every time you gain a new power cosmic buff all the other ones refresh as well since power gain has significantly shorter duration that is the one that always will expire first and that is the one that you want to keep on reactivating to completely uh well reactivate the rest of your buffs another quick uh quick side note is uh, when you are dropping your level two you often want to trigger dexterity beforehand because whilst you are throwing level two all of your buffs are paused that means the dexterity buff is going to be present throughout the entire level two. It's gonna give you much higher crit chance. And in addition to that, obviously let you do more extra energy damage because Silver Surfer does extra energy damage based on how many unique buffs he has. Having that precision buff and ideally power cosmic as well gives you quite significantly larger amount of energy damage. As we can see here, almost 5K per hit on a level two is the amount of energy damage you're doing. Uh, you will also be unblockable on your level two and that level two doesn't expire straight after unblockability. So on, sorry, that level unblockable doesn't expire straight after level two. So if opponent is under bar power, you can quite safely just stand up and keep on piling in them and kind of overextend. Silver Surfer also has synergies that uh, reduce the power gain opponents are getting when you're using board attacks, I believe. And that can be super helpful just to utilize uh, that unblockable ability as well. Now, second fight, I want to show kind of like an alternate rotation where you don't really have to go into level one in order to set up. And the key there is your heavy attack. You want to start with your fury and then you want to go immediately for your second fury as soon as power cosmic goes back online, skipping the power gain part, skipping the level one. So at this point you do have two fury buffs and one of them is quite close to being expired but uh, your power cosmic does come back early enough for you to be able to simply charge your heavy attack on the power gain buff itself, refresh both of the furies and now you have two furies active with the power gain buff and you're pretty much set. Obviously for the next one you will want to activate the armor buff and uh, reactivate the rest of your power cosmic buffs. In this fight, I will also go on level three, at which point I will speed up the fight. And uh, basically past that point, it's a regular rotation as you normally would play Silver Surfer. Level three is helpful for longer fights because it gives you an aptitude buff and aptitude buff, well, first and foremost, is an extra buff to deal more damage with. And it also incre increases the potency of your furies and power gains and what have you. So in general, for longer fights, that is more or less the maximum damage you can unlock with Silver Surfer. He's not really a marathon damage runner because once you have thrown that level uh, three, once you have built up all of the buffs, as you can see here, that's pretty much the power and the damage output has peaked. He doesn't have any ramp up mechanic and uh, his damage output, I'd say, is above average, but is definitely not quite at the very top level, especially for longer fights. The good bit is that he gets his 
power stride, his max damage output quite early. And that is quite significant because it's friendly for questing level fights, maybe later fights in Act 6 and quite up to rank 5 Silver Surfer speed. Ideally, they're a bit too long, but in like casual questing Cavalier difficulty, it's pretty much a perfect length. Now, to showcase some of Silver Surfer's utility, obviously, I cannot showcase all of it. And with making this video, I'm also not trying to claim that he's an absolute must have, but I'm trying to accent the fact that there are quite few things that he actually can do. One of the better showcases here is this uh, energy adoption ice distract path where you do need to have ability to place three debuffs on the opponent in order to deal damage. In addition to that, you also need to operate around that cold snap, which can be disabled by armor break. So we don't see it present too much in Silver Surfer fights, but you can actually use that cold snap to heal up as Silver Surfer isn't taking any damage from incinerate, cold snap or shock debuffs. And in addition to everything else, obviously it actually helps Silver Surfer deal slightly more damage. Now, these are quite beefy opponents, so fights will take quite a bit. And I remember I'm not using any boosts, any synergies, no suicide masteries, nothing like that to boost Silver Surfer's damage. He's pretty much by himself in a team putting in some work. Now, I will speed up this fight and next fight at some point because the main fight that I wanted to showcase will be against the Havoc, who is in fact quite a tricky matchup. And it's one of the changes in Act 6, which I wish Kabam never made, because I do believe dealing with Iceman is uh, easier than de dealing with Havoc on this lane in this node combination. But uh, the key aspect of the point is that you do need to have an ability to deal with all of that called snap or an ability to inflict armor break. You do need to have an access to three debuffs and you do need to have like an armor up buff or some other way how to bypass Havoc's plasma detonations. So it's very, very, very specific fight. And Silver Surfer, again, just so randomly happens to fit perfectly all of the aforementioned uh, utility pieces. So he's a fantastic answer for that. In order to get to that Havoc, we do need to get through Sentinel, which isn't going to be a perfect fight here by any means, but it's also quite quick because Silver Surfer does have class advantage. And the uh, main thing, main thing about Sentinel's tankiness is how he can basically shut down your crits and has increased up amount of armor and stuff like that. But Silver Surfer actually gets by that quite effectively because he does have a significant portion of his damage output actually placed on that extra energy damage. And then it doesn't really matter that you don't crit, nothing else kind of like really matters. And I do like that aspect, which I'm also gonna talk about and showcase a bit later on in the video, where another kind of unspoken upside about Silver Surfer is where you can manually alter how strong he's hitting by choosing either to play with no fury buffs active, one fury buff active, two fury buffs active, and so on and so forth. And that is helpful in addition to his ability to shift part of his damage to extra energy damage. But uh, now the Havoc fight. So as I mentioned, this is Havoc on this track, energy abs absorption ice. So ideally you want to be able to deal with that energy absorption ice. So you want to be cold snap immune or not take any cold snap damage or you want to be able to armor break havoc and then you're not going to have any cold snaps placed on you and uh, silver surfer can do both of those things he doesn't take damage from cold snap he can armor break havoc and shut down that node then obviously you also want a way to deal with the havoc itself and having the ability to maintain 100 uptime on his armor or buff is extremely important that's why at the start of the fight i actually waited Till, uh, that armor icon appeared on Power Cosmic before charging my heavy attack, just to make sure that I have armor above active throughout the entire duration of the fight. And obviously, then lastly, the thing that you need to work around is the distract itself, which uh, can be problematic, but Silver Surfer deals with distract so naturally because every time you use a Power Cosmic buff, it places three armor breaks on opponent, which is perfect, ideal, necessary amount. And those armor breaks last a while. You probably have around 60-70% uptime of a fight on those armor breaks. Now there, I did make a mistake. I did drop my level 2 when the armor breaks had expired. I still sometimes, well, not struggle, but uh, just kind of like forget. Be uh, because fighting Silver Surfer, you do need to have a quite good understanding of a fight mechanic. And you also need to have quite good ability to follow several different timers and track things and keep an eye on opponent's power, keep an eye on your power cosmic buff and things like that. So it isn't quite an easy playstyle. It's a very satisfying playstyle, but it's definitely not the easiest playstyle. He's not your uh, 
combo five into a special attack and rinse and repeat kind of champion. You do need to have quite a lot of uh, awareness of the fight. But here you can see that Havoc, as tricky opponent as he is, and I'm still at the full yellow bar there, 100% finish, not a problem. Another thing that I do not see mentioned too much about Silver Surfer, but that can be utilized extremely successfully, is uh, his... Um, Vigilance, I believe the buff name. Basically, he can prevent missing and he can have 100% uptime on uh, that buff. That means you can spend entire fight not missing a hit on your opponent. And the main kind of like condition there is that whenever you launch your level one, if you have three unique buffs, and that does include like dexterity buff or power cosmic buff, you activate this vigilance. That vigilance is one of your kind of like cosmic buffs that you can uh, rehash, refer, reactivate uh, whenever you trigger a new power cosmic buff or whenever you're gonna launch a level one and you have three buffs active. So if you stick to your level ones, you will have 100% uptime on that vigilance buff and that means missing an attack in a fight is not a problem and having more and more of these tunnel vision and miss mechanics in the game, it is superbly helpful. We can see there that level ones keep to them. Yes, your damage output will be slightly lower as the if you use level twos, but you can completely bypass all of the miss mechanics with 100% uptime on that ability if you know what you're doing. And uh, that's quite awesome. I do like that. I do like that uh, quite a bit. And here is the extra thing that I was talking about. And this is a rage node in 6.3. So it's a very annoying node. First of all, rage caps the damage output. And second of all, it gives the opponents the furies. And uh, the way Silver Surfer deals with rage node, first and foremost, is selecting his damage output. Now here, initially, I wanted to see what is going to happen if I use two fury buffs. And I do seem to trigger rage very, very occasionally. I'm kind of like, the bigger crits, but uh, I wasn't too worried up until opponent would get like three, four furies, so long as they're not unblockable. And if I feel that I was triggering too many furies, I would simply let my furies expire and then decide whether I want to trigger one fury or I want to play without furies at all. In addition to the fact that you do have adjustable damage output, which in this situation is extremely helpful to stay just under that range level you also have a significant amount of your damage being dealt as an extra energy damage. And because of that, you are effectively bypassing this uh, damage cap to a degree, uh, kind of like as if you were using a bleed effect or any other damage over time effect. So even though Silver Surfer doesn't have access to any damage over time effects, that extra damage on his basic hits and special attack hits can serve as an effective replacement, which doesn't trigger cornered, for instance. So there can be certain upsides to that as well. Uh, just wanted to point that out because I haven't heard it mentioned too much. And now the last showcase, the showcase of the quest where obviously Silver Surfer shines, but is kind of made redundant because of Ghost. And that is the Backblast. Basically, you have double the crit damage, but if you do crit for more than, what, 5% of opponent's health, uh, you're gonna get incinerate, which Silver Surfer loves because he doesn't take any damage from it, and uh, he actually has damage increased based on that. And uh, in this fight in particular, I also wanted to showcase kind of like a bit of a versatility because I on purpose started the fight here, activating level two on my armor of buffs, just because I knew that I'm not gonna be able to wade Punisher 2099 special attacks, but having two armor of buffs makes Silver Surfer quite tanky. So I'm gonna be spending the entire fight with two beefy armor of buffs, two furies and a power gain buff. And we can see that we're dealing also a significant amount of damage. So there's additional extra bit of that customization. And after this Punisher 2099 fight, we're gonna go on Freezer Burn, which is kind of like bread and butter node for Silver Surfer pretty much, which is one of the more popular nodes for him in AQ and plenty of other places. Cause obviously he doesn't take damage from Cold Snap. He doesn't take damage from Incinerate. So he's perfect for this freezer burn path and he actually does gain quite a bit of a damage increase uh, when he has these extra debuffs active because they technically count as unique buffs for Silver Surfer. So I hope that this video has more or less explained how to use Silver Surfer, uh, his base rotations and how you can alter them, how you can adjust the amount of furies you need based on how hard you have to be hitting. Obviously, ideally you want to go with two furies. Showed you two alternative ways how to get to two furies 
using level one and then just using heavy attacks because you do have enough time. I think uh, overall we have made quite solid case that Solar Surfer is definitely relatively useful, largely because of content that we have encountered and he just does seem to fit quite a lot of those criteria. Once again, I'm not trying to say that Silver Surfer is better than Cosmic Ghost Rider or Corvus. He's not, objectively he's not, but he is a quite good champion that has an insanely high prestige, highest prestige in game. And uh, if prestige is any motivating factor, then Silver Surfer rank up is obviously the best one you can make. And even if prestige isn't a factor, I'd still place Silver Surfer somewhere near about top five, definitely within top 10 of Cosmic class. I could compare him in terms of usability to champions like Medusa or Venom. He's not quite the Captain Mala movie Hyperion or Corvus, but he's not that bad at all. Another thing that I will showcase a picture of at the end of this video and I haven't really mentioned is the fact that uh, Silver Surfer signature ability is extremely underrated and I believe holds potential insane applications in future because he increases the potency of all buffs that are placed on him not just the ones of his own so your precision buff is more potent if you're doing uh, that uh, combo party node where you get the cruelties they are more potent if you're incursions running buff coin copia every single buff you place on silver surfer is more potent more effective and if in future we gain more nodes and more synergies like heimdall that could potentially be a game changer but that is it for today i hope you guys have enjoyed today's video if you have hit that like button hit that sub button check out the merch store and discord and line and all of the other good stuff in the description and i'm gonna catch you guys soon see ya Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about the